16b on the bottom, very bottom line. Ton Rabbonon. You have it? Ketzim Ragdim Fnei Akalo. So Rosh is, what is this? How do you dance before the Kala? We're not talking about, you know, getting dancing lessons. When you dance, what do you say before the Kala? What do you say in your presence? Rosh is, Ma'omrim L'Fonel. Right? Kalo Kamoshi. Beishame Omrim Kalo Kamoshi. Beishame says, you say, she is what she is. So Rashi says, based on what she is, she has a beautiful face, she has a beautiful face. You articulate, you can't say, she's beautiful despite she's not beautiful. Or she's capable, although she's not capable. Kamoshi, whatever she is, that's the way you quantify her. Regardless what she is, she's pleasant and she's chasuda. She has special charm. She's pleasant, she has special charm. Charming bride. That's what you say to her. You're Howard. Okay? So Hishama says, if she's an amputee, you hear this? She has a peg leg. Or she's blind. You say she's pleasant and she has special charm. What's so charming about her? But Torah Omrim Dvashen Katir Chok. Torah says you have to distance yourself from from lies. It's a famous story with the Rogachava. Rogachava Goyen. He was fierce, and somebody once came to him for a haskama for an approbation on the mm-hmm. sefer he had written. So he writes an approbation, you know, about the, the author. He's this. He's that and that, and then he leaves about twenty lines and signs his name on the bottom. So they asked him, so he says, usually you sign right under the approbation. He says, it says, you have to distance yourself from lies. <laughs> Famous story with Raga Chava. I mean, you know? So over here, Beishami says, how do you say Kaldav Chasuda? It's not, it's not true. Torah says, you're not permitted to lie. Omar Beishil Beishamai said, Beishil says to Beishamai, the Devrechim, according to your understanding, a person does a bad buy in the market. Bad buy, but he thinks he did a good buy. But in reality, it's a bad buy. What should he say? Should he praise it or should he denigrate it? Of course, everybody agrees. You praise it. If he thinks it's good, it's good. As they say, you know, beauty is nice to the You think it's great, it's a great deal. From here, the Chachom said, you have to be accommodate each person according to his his interest, his will. If that's gonna, he's happy, you're happy. It's his standard does not meet your standard. His standard, he's happy with his standard. It's okay. That's it. You don't. You not shouldn't disappoint him. So if that's the case, over here, Rosatosis points out that it's Beishamai agrees with this. But Chazal should les- legislate regardless of what she is. You must say she's that, but still says Vashem Katirchok. He also Ravdimi Omar, when Ravdimi returned from Eretzol to Bovel, he said, "Hochi Shoru Mekami Kalos B'Marova." This is what they sing, the praises they sing before the Kali in Eretz Yisrael. Lokal, she doesn't need any eyeshadow. That's the blue. No, in the old days, the verses they used to put the, eye, the color in the eye. You know, today they have colored lenses. In those days, they would put some kind of, like, something in the eye which would color the eye. With those srak, she doesn't need rouge. With those pirchos, she doesn't need her hair to be made up. The alaschein, and she has charm. She's naturally charming. She doesn't need all these other things. Then many years ago, they had a picture in the Life magazine. Maybe uh, it, was, it was out of, they didn't publish it, but they put out an edition maybe 25 years ago. That a woman with a shawl, like a woman, like you sort of went with the people coming off to Ellis Island in 1890, with a bag, a shopping bag. She has moles on her face. She's bent over. Whether she's Jewish or not, and they have another woman, about the same age, same age fit, dressed trendily, cosmetics, here do, you know, coiffured. And the question was, who is happier? That was, that was the thing. Who is happy? This woman or this woman? The woman who's 70 who looks like she's 40? Or this woman looks like we she's supposed to look like? And the, who's happier? 
You understand? Today, you can take anything and turn it into who knows what. Right? Okay. You know, you pull off the mask, you find that you see what's behind the mask. That's what we're saying. This woman doesn't need a mask. She's naturally beautiful. You know, it's interesting. The, there's a Sipsa Kachabim. It says regarding Sari Menu, she lived 127 years. So it says 7, 20, 100. So it says when she was 20, she had the beauty like a 7-year-old. So he explains every person in terms of beauty, stops developing at seven years old. Beyond seven, it's just maturing, it's the maturity. But in terms of what the person is, there's no increase of beauty. So remain, her beauty continued to advance until she was 20. It wasn't, she was locked into that and it expanded. You understand? The same idea. So this woman, she doesn't need all the externals. She's naturally that. Rabzei originally we mentioned was a Babylonian. He went to Eretz Yisrael. So when he received smicha in Eretz Yisrael, shorale, so they sang before him. What did they sing? Lokal, v'losrak, v'lopirchus. He doesn't need all these trappings. V'yalaschein. And yet, he's charming. He exudes greatness. That's what it means. Kisom you know, it's a famous story. It was a Rashim in Torah Vadas. It's one of the greatest students of Rabbi Baruch Bear. His name was Rebbe Eliyah Chazan. That was his name. Rashi Vintar Vadas. And um, during the week he wore a frock. You know, long coat. Shabbos, he wore a short jacket. So they said to him, why? He says, that's his big day hole. It was his work clothing. You understand? He didn't need it. And say he was great. He was great. The, the, the externals meant nothing. But again, you're in the position of Rosh Hashiva. You have to wear the uniform. So that's the uniform. But in terms of who he was, he, he didn't need it. He was what he was. Kisom Rabbanu Rabami Rabasi, when they ordained Rabami Rabasi, when they received smicha in Eretz Yisrael, Sharon Lehochi, Kol Mindein, Kol Mindein Smucha, Lona. This type of person, this type of person, this caliber person, this is the person who should be ordained. Because they were, they were the leading, they were both Kohanim. They were known as Kohanim Eretz Yisrael. They were the Kohanim Eretz Yisrael. They were the leading Torah sages of Eretz Yisrael. Lo sismu lono lo min sarmisin v'lo min sarmitin. Don't ordain people or sarmisin. So Rashi says, they go and they mutilate the halachos. They switch things and they totally confuse people. Sarmisin is... And people are like a rags. We don't want shmatas. It's like a rag, you know. And we say, person he looks, he looks regal, he looks reverent. He opens his mouth to hear what he is, right? They, we don't need those kind of people. Don't give us a person he, when you ask him a question, he gives you a fifth of the answer. Rashi says, "Vlomin turmisin, turmisim." Rashi says, he doesn't explain it. Yeah. Okay. Rashi says he doesn't know no pshat. It's not explained. I thought, turmisin, you know, there's a certain bean you got to, you have to cook it seven times before you're able to eat it. It's not, it's not, it's not no. It's called turmis, turmisin. Okay. Rabbi, yeah. Not Egyptian bean. Something else. You better look in your cookbook. Okay. Rabbi Voki, I've me Sifta. When he would come from Yeshiva, after he, was, he spent the day in the base marriage, he would come. This is Rabbi Vo, the Bekesar. He would visit the, the palace of the emperor. Rabbi Vo would go from the base marriage, he'd go to, to the emperor. Nafka Mosa the Bekesar. So the maidservant of the emperor, Toma Shiksa. Lape. She would go out towards him with Misharon Lane. She'd begin singing his praises. Hochi. She, Rabba Dame, the leader of his people. Umedabran de Umseg, the spokesman of his people. Butsina de Nahoro, the one who radiates light. He had radiance. Brich Masich Lishlam, your location, which you be blessed with peace. That's the praises. <coughs> Omer Lavav, Rabbi Yudav, Rabbi Loi. 
They said about Rabbi Yudaber Biloy, Rabbi Yudaber Biloy, the Gemara in the Mishnah. Mike Lerman. Mike Lerman. Okay, I'll call Mayor back. The Rabbi Yudaber Biloy, the Gemara says in Sanhedrin, it says in uh, in Eishes Chayu, Steve, Eishes Chayu, no, you know Eishes Chayu by heart. Sheker Achin Hevel Hayofi. Ir Isha Ir Sashem Hi Tisalo. This is what Sheker Achin Hevel Hayofi. Right? It says Sheker Achin, that's Dora, that's the generation of Moshe and Yoshua. They were great, but why were they great? You, you stand at Sina and you, you're exposed to the Shechina, of course you're great. Hevel Yofi, this is whatever it is. Isha, Yirsa Hashem, the one who really deserves to be praised. That's the generation of Yur, the Rebbe Loi, because they were so poor, six people covered themselves with one garment. You have the level of power, and they, they were immersed in Torah study. Even though they were so impoverished, Shisha Miskasm Talasachas. This is a famous word from Chaim Shulevitz. How did six people cover themselves with one, one blanket, one, one, one piece of cloth? Right? So Chaim Shulevitz says, Steve, listen to this. You can take it home with you. That when a person, you have, you have people under a blanket. So what does each person usually do? You pull the blanket towards yourself. So if you pull your blanket, you're pulling it off the other person. What about you have six people, each one's pushing it to the other one. If each one pulls the blanket cover, then, then you get six people under one blanket. So that was the generation of Yubri Loy. Six people, they were so selfless, and there was such obvious Israel among them, you have it. So each one says, no, you have it. So pulling it in the opposite direction, you're able to get six people under one, one cloth. Okay? Many years ago, Yeshiva. No. Many years ago, no, they served better food. They used to get, the food was, bread was donated. It was always the day old bread they would give to the Yeshiva. That was the better food. So there was one student there from South Africa. And sometimes they would serve for lunch Danishes. So, you know, he had so many people on the table, so they put so many Danishes per chairs around the table, the dining room. Come in, this person, I see he has two Danishes by his plate. So I say to him, I say, I said, you know, you realize you have a second one, that means somebody doesn't have, somebody else, you take somebody else's Danish. He has me in the first, he already has two there. Well, that's one person who's 15 years old. This guy already was 23 years old at the time. So I said, what's going on over here? He says, well, if, if, he'll go to another table. And I said, what happens if ultimately you take somebody else's? He says, look, I'm, I'm not going to worry about that. That's why the guy today is 68 years old. He's still not married. You understand? He's still not married. Because he's pulling towards himself rather than pulling towards the other guy. Steve's grandfather and my, my, my father, Elimish, were very good friends. So if you had this kind of person, they'd say, why isn't he married? But he used to say, they're looking, he's look, they're looking for a wife like the Statue of Liberty. You don't have to feed them. You don't have to clothe them. That, that's the what, what kind of wife they're looking for. You got it. That's why this guy's not married. Steve, you ever hear that from your grandfather? Okay. Okay. Rabavoki Avo. Excuse me. Omer Olav, I'll review the Rebbe Loi, show you a notel, bad shel hadas. Review the Rebbe Loi, he was leading towards sage of his generation. He would take a single myrtle. You hear this? Umrakid lefnei akalo. He'd stand before the kala and he would dance here with a single myrtle. The Omer kala nova chasuda, and he would say in her presence, pleasant and charming kala. That's what he'd say. You know what this means? The leading Torah sage says that he's there dancing with a, a t with a hadas with a myrtle, and he's waving it. He says kala nova chasuda, and that's the way he brought joy to the to the kala. Mashgiach. He was from the near Yishim in Europe. So he said, and he was very opposed, you know, weddings, Bokhrim, they come, they dance, and they put on all kinds of acrobatics and all kinds of shows and all kinds of stuff. He says, are they doing it L'Shem Shemayim? No. Are they doing it for the real right reason? They're doing it, they have their own reasons, whether it's to let off steam <laughs> or whatever it is. So he says he was once at a wedding in the mirror in Europe, and Rabbi Hanan Wasman came to the wedding. To the wedding, Rabbi Hanan. And he danced before the Kala. Rabbi Hanan, he danced before the Chazan Kala, Rabbi Hanan, and he says, he danced L'Shem Shemayim, really for the sake of Hashem. Of course, he was a tzaddik, he was Rabbi Hanan. He says, but, ha but it was obvious. Why was it obvious that he was dancing L'Shem Shemayim? 
course, he didn't know how to dance, and he danced. <laughs> that showed that he did it for the right reason. He had nothing to show off. You got it? So Rabbi Yudah Bar Eloi, he would take this little myrtle, he would shake it in front of the Kalti Chalun of Chasuda. Vom Rabbi Shmuel Bar Rabbi Yitzchok Merakid Atlas. Rabbi Shmuel Yitzchok would take three myrtles, not two, one, but Om Rabbi Zera. So Rabbi Zera said they were contemporaries. He says Saba Ki Oma Komachsev Lo Saba. He would say regarding Rabbi Shmuel, he says you're embarrassing the sages. By behaving this way, what are they going to say about us? We're a bunch of what? We're a bunch of buffoons. Saba's elders. Like a grandfather, Saba. Saba, Safta. You got it? You remember the old pond that you went to? That you failed. Okay. Kinoch Nafsheh. So when he passed away, a second. So when he passed away, Ipsik Amuda Dunura Ben Dide Lukuli Alma. At his funeral, a pillar of fire came down. And separated between him, his his remains, and the people. That means he's he's at another level. Ugmiri, and it's known, it's passed down in tradition. Lo ifsik amudid nuro. This never happens. Ella ichad do bedoro trade only once or twice in a generation. So why did he merit it? If, if actually, if he embarrassed tell me the other tell me to come by behaving this way. So evidently, this was this was proper behavior. He says, we see that the shutisa, the, the, the myrtle branch, was beneficial for, the, for this age, for the elder. Because of that, because he was willing to bring joy to the Kali, although he made light of himself, that was special. The foolishness, the way he acted like a fool in front of what? In front of the Kala, it was beneficial to him, Right? That the Shechina came down. There's a pillar of fire. Army law shitzei lesabo. Shitzei. What's shitzei? Meaning that was his way. He had his way. That's the way he brought joy to the kala. Ravacha markev la kasvei. Umraket. Hear this. Ravacha. He would pick up the kala, put it on her sho- on his shoulder. Rebaba, and he would dance with her. First thing, must have either she was small, or he was strong, one or the other. Could you imagine when Moshe finds you picking up the kala and uh, dancing with her on his shoulder? Right? But this Ravacha did. Amri li Rabbonon. So his, his colleagues said to him, or his students, Anan ma'u l'mevet hochi. Could we do this also? Could we also pick up the, the kala and dance with her on our shoulders? Omar l'hu, i dami alech kishur l'chayai. He says, if you see her no more than a log of wood, you're welcome. You're welcome to do it. Be low, but if not low, then you can't do it. You understand? The Gemara tells us in uh, in uh, Brochos, Rabbi Yochanan was beautiful. He had the, the, the Gemara says Rish Lokshet by Rabbi Yochanan's Rebbe, he had the beauty of a woman. He, that's how beautiful he was. He was a beautiful man. So he would sit outside the mikvah. Women would go to the mikvah that they should gaze on his beauty. So when they would look at his beauty, when they would go home and cohabit with the husbands, this would enable to, them to have more beautiful children. That the impression of seeing such a beautiful man would affect that you should have more beautiful children. Said he said to Rabbi Yochanan, aren't you afraid to sit there? You see women coming out of the mikvah. Mar said, aren't you afraid of ayin hara? Right? They're all they're gazing on your beauty. He says, I'm from, I come from Yosef. We're susceptible. We're not susceptible to ayin hara. I don't have to worry. So the question is, what about he's looking women? He said, maybe he sat there with his eyes closed. He didn't look at them. So he answered. He said, he said well, what about, the, you'll, be, you'll be attracted to him. He says, they're, they're, they're no different than a bunch of white geese. That's Rabbi Yochanan. They're like white geese. You will see a bunch of white geese. So you, you, you were aroused by watching white geese? Meaning he was a le- So the same thing, Ravacha. She's like Kishura. She's like a log. If you see her, you're that removed from it, it's not a problem. But if you're not, then it is a problem. There's a story, you know, Everybody, you know, they want to play holier than thou. So it was at a wedding or a dinner. So people are very machmir, you know. They only eat a certain type of shechita, and they only eat a certain type of this or a type of that, a certain hechsha. So Yaakov Kamenetsky was at a time was at a dinner. He had these younger people. He was a married man, like about 90. And they were maybe 20, 30 years younger than him, maybe more. And they, you know, they were all wearing their, you know, their uniforms, you know, the frock and the hat and this and that. <coughs> And the waiter comes over. Meat, chicken, or fish? 
or vegetables, you know, vegetable plates. Live vegetables. Do you know do you know the fish? Do you know this? So not what's this a let fish. But none of them would even have chicken or meat under those circumstances. Don't know, you know, shita. Yes, Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Yakan, what would you like? I'll have the meat. You understand? Rabbi it's okay. You know something? It's okay. They weren't 150th or 100th of Rabbi Yakan. It's, I'll have the meat. It's okay. Of course he knew it was good. Of course it was good. But you know, it, it's like pot. It doesn't, it, it's not appropriate that you yourself, you know, you need something, you know, you know whatever, for whatever reason. Like Steve, he just won't come here too often. He'll look, he'll, look, he'll look like he's showing off. Comes every morning to learn early in the morning. Once in a while he visits. Okay? And when he w comes in, where's the baseball cap pulled down over his face? You shouldn't even notice him. That's how humble he is. Okay? Accurate, accurate description. Okay, good. Amrav Shuva Nachmone Rivyon said, Mutal is taco with Nekalo, Koshiva, Kil Chava Bailo. Other people are permitted to gaze on, at the collar during the seven days of marriage. Why? That she should be endeared to, the, to her husband. You hear this? We don't rule this way. This is not appropriate. What you look, she's a married woman. If, if people, they, they can be attracted by gazing at her, her, her looks. It's, it's Torah violation. Let's say you have a funeral and you have a wedding going on. And the funeral is going to interrupt that you're not able to celebrate the wedding. You remove the mess and you let the wedding party pass. Let's say coming on the street. And then, then, you, bring the, then the, you bring the corpse. What about if the king is coming? There's, there's a mitzvah, there's a positive commandment that you have to show your, your reverence for the king. So let's say there's a wedding procession, there's a funeral, and the king. You put, put them off, you delay them, and the king goes first. Okay? Second, Omru al of Agrifas Hamelech. They say about Agrifas. Agrifas was a king. He came from the Her 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 Herodian line. So he wasn't. A, he wasn't a real king. He wasn't a real. Okay, Shavim lefnei Kala, and he he let he t he p went aside and let the Kala go first. The Shibchul Chachomim, and they praised him for this. So the question is, but he did something inappropriate. So was the Shibchul Mechlal the Shapa Ovid. So if they praise him, evidently did the right thing, right? Ravashi is even according to the opinion that a prince, he has a right to waive his honor. But a king is not permitted to waive his honor. That you always have to be in a state of fear from him. So he's not permitted. He's not permitted to waive his honor. So that's what it says. Meaning, was that a cross or it wasn't obvious? If it was obvious that he was what compromising his honor, that he couldn't do. But it was a crossroads. He could He was really wanted to go, let's say, to the left. But if he would have gone to the left, he would have interfered with the wedding procession. So he went to the right, but it wasn't noticeable. So since it wasn't noticeable, that's not considered compromising his honor. So Tosas asks, but if he, he wasn't a real king. So what, what, what's the whole discussion? They praised him. You're not a real king. You did the right thing. So Tosas says. Even though he wasn't a real king. But facts that they did, they treated him like a real king. So therefore, based on the way they treated him, they were compromising the standard that they're supposed to have. And that Tamar says it was a crossroads, therefore it wasn't noticeable. So it's a question. The Gemara says that by quotes the Gemara in... Uh, Sota, it says, every eighth year of the sabbatical side, what they had what? They had the uh, hakel. What happened in hakel? The king would read the Torah. He would stand. So the Mara asks, how did he stand? The king's not permitted to waive his honor. So, so he said, so the answer is, it's a mitzvah. So there's a mitzvah to be misameh chos in the kala. So maybe that's the, what's the Mara's question here? He's not permitted to waive his honor over there, the Mar says, for the sake of mitzvah, he's permitted to waive his honor. That's the overriding factor. Tos says, over there, he's not waiving his honor. Tos says, Nothing is, has greater value than Torah. So therefore, that mitzvah supersedes his. 
his honor is greater than the honor of a, of a Kalu. So Tosa says over here, from here we're able to arrive, who says that if you have a funeral and you have a wedding procession, you first let the wedding procession go first. He says, if you have a chosen and an oval in, in, in a shul simultaneously, who do you acknowledge first? Seemingly, you should acknowledge the chosen, right? Because the same thing. A wedding procession, a funeral, says you let the wedding procession go first. So Tosa says, Kamashma, Kishesh oval v'chosen misakanesa, chosen yotzi tchilo, shoshvinov, v'shuv yotzi ovel, umenachma, first you allow the chosen and all his whole Antaraj go out first, then you let the Ovel go. The Gama Krovim, Lchosen, Ovel, Yochul Besachosen, Im Yirtu. The Kvodu Kodim, Chebe Boge, Shemulichen, Han Kalo, Besachosen, A Kalo Tchilo, Im Yeshmes, Voir, or Yikavu Kodim, Sheagir, Shabuke. Further. Tonarabonan. The Vatlin Talmud Torah, Lotsosim, is Murmur Migilo also. You're permitted to interrupt your Torah study. To go to a funeral, a person is learning and there's a funeral. And there's a question, do you attend the funeral or do you continue studying? You interrupt your Torah study to attend the funeral. Or hachnosis kalo. You interrupt your Torah study for hachnosis kalo. Omer olava, review the Rebbe Eloi. Again, review the Rebbe Eloi. Shoyim mevat tamu Torah lo tzos ha-mes ulachnosis kalo. He would interrupt his Torah study for a funeral and for to accompany the kachos and kalo. The medvar mur b'sheish. That's only, let's say, for a funeral, you need a, a minion. You need a minion. So if there's no minion, he would interrupt to join. But what about there were sufficient people at the funeral? Just to come to be at a funeral, not. Now, what's considered sufficient? What's considered a sufficient amount of people at a funeral? Right? Omer of Shmuel, Barini, Yishmei the Rav. Rashum Barini says the name of Rav, Trace Alfi Gavro. 12,000 men, Veshit al Shipuri, and 6,000 shofar blowers. They would blow the shofar. Vami lo, others say, Tlais al Gavro, 13,000 men, and of them, Uminao Shis al Shipuri. Okay? So Shipuri, he says, means they go and they announce that people should come to the funeral. Omar, and if you want to know, you know, the, you know, the police, when they have groups, they take, they make an estimation. How many people? So they go a block. If you have a block of people, so many thousands. And that's how they do it. It's the same thing. He says, if you want to know, I, we can start counting people. So he says, it's the, they take up a, a distance, an area from Chaitzi, Gavro, Me'avulo, Vatzichro. The two locations, one's place called Avulo, one's called Sichro. That space, that distance, if it's filled with people, that's the number. That when a person dies, he's being taken. So we're talking about a Talmud Chochem. We're not talking about an ordinary Jew person. So ordinary Jew, it's a minion. We're talking about a Talmud Chochem. The person, who we'll see in a moment, as the Torah was given, how many Jews were in Kabbalah? 600,000. So just as when it's given, you have so many, when it's taken, you have to have the same amount. Just as Torah was given at Sinai with 600,000 men, 600,000. What's considered a person who, who studied sufficiently? The person who learned who knows Tanakh, knows Mishnah. But the one who taught others, it's not only the person who knows, but he taught others, he disseminated Torah, less Lishura. It's, it's, the number is, 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 is unending. It goes even beyond 600,000. So Tosa says, so what's the inference of this Gemara here? So if a person doesn't have, doesn't, doesn't, didn't learn Chomesh, didn't learn Mishnah, right? So what do you do? That's not, you only have enough people who we need, you know, to attend to the burial needs of the person. He says, but remember the first time it was in Yerushalayim in 1970. <coughs> Judah, how old are you now? Okay, I was in 1970. Okay, he was two years old. He was still in the States in those years. So I, I remember I was in Mesha Orin. That's something I never saw in New York. And there was a funeral going down Mesha Orin. And as the funeral went down, each storekeeper came out of his store, closed the door, and followed the, the funeral procession. 
and then went back to the store. Every single storekeeper came out and followed at the funeral. And that's what he's saying. Tosa says, here we're talking about a person, the numbers, great numbers, but even an ordinary person. What? People who are working, you have to interrupt your work and accompany. But how far do you have to walk? You only have to walk Dalaramos. Only four cubits behind. Afterwards, you, you can return. Okay, one second. So Tosov here says, what says mess, it, 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 doesn't mean, it doesn't mean a mess mitzvah. God forbid you find a person who's unattended, a Jew who dies. You're regardless, you have to do what you have to do there. Okay, further. My even what says, if, if you saw her with a, with, a, with a male, then you know she was a Absula. She gets to Mahi Numo. What is he Numo? Surchiv. Surchiv. Because it's Mahi Numo. Surchiv bar popo. Mishmei diziri omar. Tanura daso. Yeah. So he says, Chupa shaladasa gula. It doesn't mean a veil. It means that the canopy, the chupa, was made of what? Was made of myrtles. Okay? Chupa shaladasa gula. A circular type of chupa, but it's made of myrtles. That's what a tanur dasa, a tanur in the old days, a tanur was, was circular, was round. So a tanur of asa, asa in Aramaic is, is, is uh, hadasim. Rabbi Yochanomak, krisa dimnamnu bokaloso. It's a face covering, a veil, very often a person, if their eyes are covered, they fall asleep. It's the, it's the, it's the veil that the kala dozes off she dozes off behind the veil because you don't see. Okay, Rashi says, "Sif shel rosha b'shuva alineo k'mo she'osim mimakomenu pomi shemenam memes b'socha shein mitoch sheineo magulin." Since her eyes are covered, so it's more difficult to stay awake because she can't. When you see something, that 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 stimulates you. But if the eyes are covered, you don't have the light stimulation or what you see. Well, lekach nikra hinuma. You hear this? Why is the veil called hinuma and tenuma? What does tenuma mean? Right. Hashem removes sleep from my eyes and slumber from my, my brow. So the reason why the hinuma is called hinuma from the word tenuma, slumber. Because it causes us to doze off. People doze off without the veil. Okay? That's the reason why some people wear the, the brim of the base go backwards. Because if it's covered, so they, they don't, they don't uh, doze off. You get the full the full brunt of the light. That's <laughs> that's it. Nothing goes through there because that's because they're so machmir. Today you don't have to be chassid. In one time only chassid wore that kind of veil. It's like a, a, a piece of cloth. It's cloth. It's not. It's not right. And yeah, right. It wasn't mesh. Years ago it was like a mesh type of veil. And you were able to see through the veil. Maybe. Depends how much sleep you had the night before, what it takes to fall asleep. Okay. Rabbi Yochan ben Brokome. Rabbi Yochan Brokome says they would distribute uh, kernels, baked kernels, which were sweet for the children. So if you brought witnesses that, that was also an indication she was a besula. Tana Yehuda Raya Bebavomai. In Yehuda, that's what they would do. But what about in Bavel? Omar Rav, Omar Rav, Durdagi de Mishko, Areshu Drabonon. Yeah. Hanoshim knows the Shemin Brosha Talmid and Bishopos. This is Tarachim. They would go and they would put oil on the heads of the students and they would rub it in. I mean, we're talking about, how's it about the women? The, no, the women would put oil on the heads of the students and they rub it in. That was an indication. Yeah. Oma le rapopa la bai mishra de chafifusa komar. Right? We're talking about fragrant oil. It wasn't just oil, it was fragrant oil. Oma le rapopa la bai mishra de fusa komar. Oma le yasma lo abdi loch imech. She says, yasma lo abdoch loch imech dudugi mishra areshid rabon bishas maisa. Yeah. Yosem Minika Noeg. She says, she said to him, right? 
So he says, Omalei Rav Papa, when we talk that, he says, Yasma lo abdi loch imach dadugi mishcha, areisha drabon mishas maiz. He says, because it's like you're an orphan from this custom. You're unaware of this custom. Ki hoda hu merabonu diyasek libre, be rabba barulo. This, this person, Tamcho, was marrying off his son in the, to the family of Rabba Barulo. Ba'amile Rabba Barulo, Yasek Lebrei, Behu Merabonon, Redardig Mishcha Reisha, De Rabbon Bishas Maisa. And they would actually, at the, at the wedding, they put oil, this, this fragrant oil, on the heads of the Talmud Chachomi. Amalo said, Mai, what did he do if she was a widow? What did he do at the wedding? Mai, Tony Rab Yosef, Amalo is Leslie Kisni. Right? They didn't give out these uh, these kernels. They didn't give it out. Ain't look cloyos is a simna. By not having it. No, they didn't do it. If she was a psula, they would have this. But that, they didn't give it out. Omoder of Yeshua. Okay. Bohem lechaveru. says, the Mishnah says that Rabbi Yehuda, although he doesn't know the Migo, Rabbi Yeshua, in the first parak, remember we said this at the beginning, in this case, a man comes and he says, the field that I'm in is your father's field. He has no proof. But the person was una unaware that it was his father's field, he's believed. Why? Because because what is the basis why it's yours? Because I informed you. You have no proof. So just as I inform you, it's mine. If you believe me, it's yours. Believe me that I p purchased the job. You don't believe I purchased, don't believe it was ever yours. So it goes hand in hand. Okay? So the Mara says, yeah. What do we have to say? He said, it was your father's. It was your father's. Let me say, this field was yours. And I bought it from you. Let's say a man has no proof the field is his. You could scream from today to tomorrow, bloody murder. It's my field. Even if he, the person has no proof that he, 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 he says, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. Do you have evidence it was yours? He just ignores him. So the question is, what do we have to talk about? This field was his father's. And I purchased it from the father. Say it's yours. The field was yours. I purchased it from you. And factually, you have the same Pesha Speshitir. Believe me, it's mine, because if I want it, as you believe me on one, believe me on the other. It was yours, but I bought it from you. If you don't believe me, I bought it from you. Don't believe me, it was ever yours, because you, no, you have no proof that it was yours. Mm -hmm. So what do we have to talk about him saying to the person who's your father's, you have the same peshas and peshayit here, saying it was his, right? Same thing. He says, Because there's a concluding case. How does the case conclude? How im yesh edim, if the witness is that what? that it was his father's, then, he, unless he has proof he was there for three years, he's out. He's out. It's what it says, Yesh Eid Mishish Elo, Vu'ama Lekachtiya Mimenu, Eno Nemon. Right? It says, this, that, that, it says later, that it says, if he has witnesses, she Elo. He has witnesses that it was his, and he says, I bought it from you. He's not believed. Hechidam, Idoch Lishnei Chazoko, Yeah, this is very... If the purchaser is there three years, and he can bring proof that he was there three years. No, well, no. Am I lo mehemin? You're not looking at the Gemara. Why shouldn't he be believed? Three years is the equivalent of having a uh, deed. Right? We're trying, we're trying to figure out. It says, it says, if the person brings witnesses his, he's out. So we want to know what the person who's there, what does he have? How many years he's been on the field? If he's there three years, so why is he out? Why shouldn't he be believed? Right? I have witnesses. This, this house is mine. Also, I show up. Somebody's living in my apartment. So, it, do you tell me? Is, is it a chiddush that you tell you put the man out? Of course, you put him out. It's mine. He's, he has no right to be there. So, what's the mishnah have to tell me? If he has witnesses, you put him out. So, understood, you put him out. talking about the Mishnah says, if the original person has witnesses that it was his, there's no chazoka. The man doesn't have proof he was there three years. If he's there three years, he has a right to remain. So he has a right to remain. Now how do you prove that you still own the land? We're talking about he owned it. He's been proof that he owned it previously. How do you bring proof you own it now? How do you bring proof to that? The man just brings proof he's there three years. If you own a house, he's there three years. Three years is the equivalent of a deed. We're talking about he didn't protest. 
A person it didn't protest for three years, somebody's living in his hand, in, on the property. He loses. But it's an if, right? So it said it's understood you don't put him out. So if we're talking about where the man does not prove he's there. So the mission has to tell me you put him out. It's understood you put him out. Pshita. So what exactly is the case? Am I lo mehemet? Vid lo achlishnech? Pshita lo mehemet. So he says, Bishlom gabi yovi mishkachos lo. He says, regarding if the field was his father's, we could have, we could work out the case. What's the case? What happens if the three years he occupied the property, his father was alive two of the three years, and the son, so the father didn't have to protest, right? Because the fa in the father's lifetime, he had another year to protest. What? No. You learned this Gemara yet? Okay, so if you don't know, just listen. If you prepare it, then you prepare it correctly. And if you didn't prepare it, then definitely you, you don't know. I'm serious. You're saying things which, which have no relevance to the discussion. The father, if a man, is, is, let's say, is, is on your property, the Chachom say you have three years to protest. Make a public protest. And if you have make a public protest, the one who occupies the land, uh, being aware that his rights are being contested, he, he'll keep on, he'll hold on to that deed, if he had a deed. If he doesn't have a deed, that proves he never had a deed. Okay? So let's say the father, he was in the property for two years. The father didn't have re reason to protest yet, because he had another year to protest. The father has a heart attack, he dies. Now there's an heir to the son. So it's two, he's, and now he stays the third year during the son's tenure. Right? So if it would have been the same person, he'd say, you know something, he, he, he protested, because he, it, it's the third year. But the son's only there, is only aware he's there for one year. So he remains silent. So even though you occupied it for three years, the silence is not an indication that you have a right to be there. Because the main right emanates, you should have protested. But here you have no reason to say you should have protested. Because the father only saw it two years, and the son only saw it one year. You got it? So let's read it inside. Sheoch <laughs> Two of the years were eaten in the lifetime of the father. Let's see a person took possession of, of a minor's property, and then he became an adult. So since he started, he took possession when he was a child. He doesn't understand that he has no right to be there when he's an adult. Because if you're out of the picture initially, you, you don't come back into the picture. You got it? Let's see a person... The occupier occupies a piece of land that belongs to a minor. To a minor. So the minor, could he protest? He doesn't have an appreciation of what's going on. So let's say it would be two years when he's a minor, one year when he's an adult. So you say, because it, it's, it, it's not considered. There's no claim he should have protested. Of course, when he was a minor, he had no understanding of what was going on, right? Rav Huna said, as a result of the same here, two years in the, by the father, one year by the son, although the, the, the three years without protest, again, the first two years had no relevance to the son. He was out of the picture. He was unaware of what was going on. Therefore, although you occupied three years, if you don't have the deed, you're out. You understand? That's the Kiddush. You could have a case where you're there three years and you still you put the man out of the land. Unless he has proof that it was his. And what's the proof? You have to have a deed. You never had a deed, you're out. It's only if the same person you occupied during the time with the original owner... Witness sees you there for three years and you remain silent. But if it's divided between the father and the son, then we don't say that. Okay.